In a nutshell, uh, we've had a number of defibrotide presentations built around the Treatment IND, which is a large expanded access program, um, which was conducted in the US um, up until 2015 from 2009. And it enrolled close to 900 patients, which is an enormous database. And basically two of the major presentations derived from those studies um, were presented here at the meeting. First by my colleague, Dr. Stefan Grupp, um, who gave an oral session on Saturday. And the second we presented uh, yesterday, in fact, um, looking at various factors that are influencing outcome. Um, I'll start with ours and then perhaps uh, to speak directly to the, to, the, to the oral presentation in a moment. But in the, um, the study that we did, we looked at AML and ALL outcomes because obviously these are particularly vulnerable patients and they were each respectively about a quarter of the patients. So it constituted up to 50% of the patient database. And the question was, how did they fare? ALL or AML. And the really good news is that the day 100 survival in both groups was very respectable, around 46-47% compared to you know, 10 or 15% from controls. So that was a very favorable finding. In the same setting, um, what we found also was that the tolerability of defibrotide and the treatment-related adverse event profile was also very favorable both in the AML and ALL populations. So in a nutshell, the acute leukemic picture in terms of outcome from defibrotide therapy in the presence of severe VOD SOS post-transplantation typically, although there were a small number of patients who didn't have transplant and were chemotherapy only, we were able to demonstrate that there was a significant, well, a consistent and significant uh, clinical benefit uh, signal seen, both in terms of overall survival and obviously complete response. And I think one of the most interesting things about the presentation that Stefan Group gave on the, as an oral session on Saturday morning was this concept of when, can, you know, when to best introduce defibrotide. And we've long felt that if you come in early with it, you do much better. And so hence, a lot of the studies have moved away from waiting till multi-organ failure is well established and come in somewhat sooner. And the outcomes do appear to be better. This analysis used this 900 patient database and looked at timing of initiation of defibrotide in the context of diagnosis. And if you look at simple dichotomous variables like day one or longer, day seven or longer, day 14 or longer. Each time consistently, the longer you waited, the worse the outcome. And that intuitively would, would make sense. What was interesting though, was that even in the late onsets, in other words, when you had a diagnosis and for whatever reason treatment was introduced several weeks later, even those patients seemed to benefit, which was quite remarkable. But clearly the best survivals were seen in those patients in whom defibrotide came in early. Now, why does this matter? Well, for obvious reasons, it improves outcome. But on the other hand, it also provides a strong rationale for the prevention trials that are now getting underway. Uh, and these are important studies. They're not just looking at incidence of VOD and outcome in the broader sense, but they're looking at incidence of graft versus host disease and other factors that may be very relevant in improving uh, outcome for patients with defibrotide therapy.